Yeah, delighted today we're here for another edition of Club Talk Football, joined by Paul Fitzpatrick of the Anglo Celt, Jason Byrne of the Irish Sun. How are you doing, man? Good stuff, good stuff. Let, let's just jump straight into it. There's so much football going on this weekend that we might as well get to it. And Donegal, Jason, I mean, you're a, a local up there. Nave Connell against Glen Finn, Kilcar against St. Michael's, uh, Guido against Sean McCool, and Unans against uh, Ray Namara Bundoran. What kind of stands out as the most intriguing, or is it uh, is it a lopsided draw? It seems quite seeded. Yeah, it is a it is a lopsided draw. Shame the the reward for um for all the big guns that won all their four games was to get a, a seeded home draw for the quarterfinals. So, um, the four big guns there are clear four clear big guns in the county now. There's no debate about that. You've Kilcar, Gidor, St. Junins, and Neve Connolly, of course, uh, are the reigning champions. And um, the four of them have obviously avoided each other in the quarterfinals, and um, you know the four of them are, are hot favourites to, to go through to the semis. They were the four semi finalists last year, and um, you know you have three of the four last county champions in there as well. Um, you know Kilcarra won it in 2017, Gidor won it in 2018, and Neve Connell last year too. And Gidor, of course, uh, went on to win an Ulster title and get to an All Ireland semi final the year they won as well. From them for me is is St. Junins against Real Namara Bundorn. Um, you know, Bundorn have improved massively in the last few years. You know, a lot of years they would have been stuck in relegation playoffs. Just a lot of things weren't going very well for them. And um, they absolutely destroyed um Ardra in their final round robin game last time out. Um, they're scoring for fun. They'll definitely uh, cause St. Junins a lot of problems, but you still would fancy the Letter Kenny Club to go through to another semi final and um St. Junins have a have a big say in the championship and hope to get their first title for a few years. But um, favourites for me are still Kilcar simply because of their attack and the pace that they have um, going through and the way they, they run the ball and work it through the lines. Paddy and Stephen McBurdy, both in the form of their lives again. Ray and McHugh, don't need, well, you know, we're running out of super laddabs for him at the minute. Like he's just pure class. Mark McHugh rejuvenated again at club level. Um, Andrew McLean on the fringes of the Nagal panel now and hoping to make a breakthrough into the starting team. Um, There's there's still the hard favourites for me in a way um, when it boils down to it. I've seen plenty of these Donegal teams over the years and in Ulster Championship never mind the odd game in, in Donegal too. Are you surprised that more Donegal teams haven't come through and made an impact overall? Because like Jason has just talked about the power that Kilcar have there with the McHughes and the McBrearties and so on. You'd think that an All-Ireland wouldn't be too far away for a club like that. So, you know, Guido got themselves to an All-Ireland semi-final and pushed Cara Finn very close. Yeah, I think from, from what I've seen out of them and talking to people in Donegal, Shane, any one of that big four would tighten an Ulster club title. You know, there's probably no county in Ulster that has four teams of the quality of Kilcar, Guido, Tenties and St. Unions. Uh, Jason would know that better than me, but there does seem to be a gap there looking from the outside in down to the other teams. Now, it's interesting that uh, Jason's talking about Bundoran because I know they have Jamie Brennan and, and Paul Brennan, no relation. So, you know, any team that has Jamie Brennan up front has got to be in with a chance because everyone knows how good he is. But it, it, it's very interesting. I saw Atlantis up close last year in the Ulster Club when they played Castle Rahan. And as someone following football in Cavan, like that was one of the most depressing. Uh, defeats and there's been a few of them first, but that was one of the most depressing defeats for a Cavan team in an Ulster Championship because Castellan were after winning their second in a row so obviously everyone knows that it's it's hard to do well in the province after winning your first because it's all new and celebrations and everything else Castellan had won their second, they had a home draw and they had a three week break coming into it and they were playing against the Neil Connell team who had been through the, through the wars and were playing right up until the previous Wednesday night, I think it was, uh, in that epic uh, county final, which went to, I think, a third game. So, and Dentis came out, and Castellan are the best team in Cavan, or they definitely were for the last two years. And Dentis came out, and just with, that, with the minimum of fuss, you know, just, uh, you had Big McGuinness there, full forward, Anthony Thompson, uh, Leo McLuhan, a few a few key men experienced, and they just knew exactly what they were doing, and never panicked, and beat Castellan with their ease. So. You know, if you have four teams on, on, on that level in Donegal, it says a lot about that Donegal Senior Championship. Jason, j- just ask you about these quarterfinals. Is there one that's kind of, like, which is the, t- the the biggest lopsided games here, or which is the most likely one to give us a shock? Um, if there was a shock, again, I would say that St. Julian's Bundoran game. Um, as Paul alluded to there, Jamie Brennan up front, he can just do so much damage. 
Probably the most lopsided one if you looked at it might be Neve Connell against Glenn Finn. Glenn Finn are just up from intermediate. They're fully deserving of their quarter final spot. You know, they, they beat me on Club Kelly Beggs in the first round quite comprehensively. Um, they have Frank McGlynn is their main man still, you know, the, the Rolls Royce footballer. He was such a favourite among Donegal supporters and a great servant to the intercounty team. But uh, I'd say that one is the most lopsided because when um, when Glenn Finn came up against uh, Kilcar in the, in the round robin stages, they got a fair old trimming. So it's just that top four are just so much far ahead of everyone else at the moment. It's just kind of completely tailed off there. So, um, you know, Sean, Sean McCools will give Gio a bit of bother as well. But, um, you know, three, Dave Oshin Gallon up front, um, super, super player, be a massive player for running golf for years to come as well, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, they're all fairly lopsided in my book, Shane. Um, I do expect Brundor and to give some unions plenty to think about going into the semi finals, but those top four are your fairly nailed on semi finals we'll for me. We'll move on to Monaghan in a second, but Paul, as you listen to, to Jason go through some of the different fours that Donegal have, and we haven't even mentioned Michael Murphy either. They really do have an embarrassment of riches. Uh, it's unbelievable, yeah. Like Johnny God takes so many boxes. Like McBrear is a once in a generation player. Like as a point scorer, you know, his goal scoring record is probably not great for considering his status as an absolute marquee forward in the game at a national level. Like he I'd probably like to see him score more goals. But as a point scorer, he's just as good a player off the left foot as to kick points as, as we've seen in the game. And like you know, people don't even talk about me barely that much because Murphy's there and now Jamie Brennan is there and this man Ushin Gallen that Jason's talking about like tremendous players uh, uh, like coming from Cavan another county Ulster it would actually make you sick to look at the, the talent that Donegal have coming through because Cavan have been crying out for forwards uh, and Donegal have too many of them OK so to move on to the Monaghan Championship this weekend Scottstown against Carrick McCross Emmett's Bally Bay Pierce uh, Brothers against Inishkeen talk to us about this Paul um, exciting weekend ahead yeah, this is a big one now in Monaghan. It's a, the two semi-finals are taking place in Clonus on Sunday. And it's just coming to the boil nicely in Monaghan. And the big the big word, I suppose, is that Plant Ibert are out. They're the champions. Um, John McAtee from Cross and Ben is, was over them this year. He was over them last year when they won it. And they have a lot of big names in the team. Like, obviously, Conor McManus is, is the main one. But they didn't get out of the group, which is a huge upset. And I think they drew four games and uh, were eventually beaten. And that was a massive up, upset. And they went into a relegation playoff and... and uh, got pushed close enough in that as well, which is which is incredible. But it's left the way open now for someone else. So Scotstown are going to be the favourites to win the championship. They're playing Carrick Macross, and they've already hammered them in the championship. But there's an interesting uh, subplot to that is that Colin McGarry is the manager of Scotstown, and who previously was the trainer of the team, and the manager was Matty Medlina. And when Matty Medlina went to take over Cavan, Colin McGarry stepped up to become manager of Scotstown, and now Matty Medlina is over Carrick Macross and doing a good job with them because they're a well beaten. As I said, by Scott Sun in the group, but they've improved a lot since that. So that's a really interesting one. Like they've Scott Sun, Scott is a huge area. Like originally there were three junior clubs way back in the fifties, and they all amalgamated to form the Scott Sun club. So they have a huge big area to pick from, and they've got again. You talk about an embarrassment of riches. Like they've got household names in their teams, like like some Rory Began, Darren Hughes, Conor McCarthy, uh, Kieran Hughes. You know, ph- phenomenal players. Uh, on the other side of the Carrick, they're they're looking to O'Hanlon, the corner forward, who's who Stephen O'Hanlon, who broke into the the Monaghan side in the last couple of years. He's the basketball uh, man, isn't he? Yeah, basketball player, and unbelievably quick. You know, to see him up up close, he probably uh, hasn't just broken through into the national consciousness yet. Even though we did get a great goal against Dublin in a league match, but he puts up huge tallies in, in club matches. So that's interesting. Scotts are going to be favourites there. Bally Bay against Inniskeen is an interesting one as well because. Bally Bay have been so close in the last few years. Like one of the traditional heavyweights of modern club football, and they're trying to make that breakthrough and win another championship before it gets too late. Because Drew Wiley, uh, Paul Finley, players like that have been there a long time, and you know they're a long time waiting to win one back. They've won the senior league a couple of times in Monaghan. They had Scotstown beaten a couple of times. Once they were eight points up going into injury time, and Scotstown scored two two, and they lost the replay. So they're going well. Colin Malone is the manager of them. They've got Desi Ward that's on the Monaghan panel as well. Paul Finley's coming back from injury. You've got Drew and Ryan Wiley playing well. Chrissy McGuinness is playing well. Kieran Gallagher, former cabin player, is playing well for them around the middle of the field. They beat in a scheme by a point earlier on in the competition, but in a scheme are going well as well. Oshi McConnell is over them. And he had them playing super defensively early on in the, in the competition. They were actually playing with two sweepers. But they played true in the quarterfinal and uh, 
I think they scored two seventeen, and most of that came from play. And they've got a young player called Andrew Woods, who, who's phenomenal. He normally plays foot forward, but he played midfield the last day, and he absolutely ran the game. So it's an interesting one. Some big name managers are on it, the likes of McIntyre, McConnell, McLean, and. Uh, and this man Macquarie, who who has a good record as well. So the modern championship is going to be. I think it's going to be one of the most exciting championships in Ulster. Jason, I know you probably wouldn't have got to that many Monaghan games in recent times. I mean, it's tough to get to all the championships. But that that just that whole danger of beating a team in a group stage and then meeting them again later down the line, because you feel like well we did everything right, even though you might have won by a point. Whereas the team that lost, they really do start to do a bit of self introspection and think what can we do to turn things around. So. In some ways, as long as you weren't hammered, it feels like you can almost go in there with the edge, you've got a stick to beat your players with, and you can kind of feel like you've got a chip on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And um, we'll see that in the, in the Mayo Championship this weekend too, when, um, when Knock Moore come up against Bal and I, like they, they met each other in the group stages there, and there was only a point in it. So, um, it's it's definitely a, a dangerous tonic for for whoever wins the game in the group stage. Like and you know, yeah, you, you have it in your mind too that you've already beaten this team too. So I don't know. Like it's a it's a funny one. Like mindset's obviously a massive thing, especially in these strange COVID times when fitness might might be lacking a wee bit. So um, it's it. I just let you back back in there as well. Uh, you you had a comment to make on that, Paul? Yeah, just just about. Uh, what happened in Cavan was Ramar United beat Cavan Gales in, by nine points in, in the third round of the group stage. And two weeks later, the Gales beat them by 10 points in the quarter final. So a 19 point turnaround. Uh, so, yeah, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous to, to have beaten a side and then played it again in the quarter final because you know, they're going to be going in as, as, as uh, underdogs and nothing to lose, I suppose. I think we're having trouble there with Jason at the moment. His, uh, his Skype call isn't coming through perfectly. But we'll power on any, all the same. The down court finals are on this weekend. Uh, Bally Hollander against Lachlan Island. Uh, Lachlan Island. Ross Trevor against Kilku. Warren Point against Clandoff. And Warren Point would be expected to win that one. Bally Holland met Lachlan Island at the same stage last year and came out on top. But the big one interesting is um, is the two big boys meeting each other, uh, Ross Trevor and Kilku, because Pete McGrath is up against Mickey Moore. And two men over the age of 70, wow. give or take. So that's And two legends of the game. So what a clash. Yeah, two two of the great gentlemen of also football as well. Like, and what I find amazing about both those those men is the, the longevity that they've shown. Like, I think Mickey Moore started, or sorry, Pete McGrath started managing teams in nineteen seventy eight, and he started with the Ross Trevor under sixteens, and then he went into St Coleman's College and uh, had an amazing track record in college's football. Like, I would have covered it all, but that's before my time. But even when I started covering college matches, St Coleman's were always absolute giants of of college's football and Ulster. And of course, he, he was manager, and he was still in his thirties when he managed there in, in 1991. And you can see the impression that, that Pete McGrath had on his players. Like the, the 1991 Darren team, I think five of that team have gone on to manage Darren and themselves, which, which has to be a record. Of an All Ireland winning team, five of those went on to manage the same county in the years after. And a lot of that has to be do has to be to do with Pete McGrath. You know the the uh, impression he made on players. I I met him when I was 14 one time. Uh, just to tell you a quick story. I think I mentioned before. Uh, which is shared with my, my grand uncle in Belfast it was a uh, GA journalist and he mainly he was involved with Down County Board but anyway when I was about 14 I went up to Belfast with him and we went to this uh, also GA Writers Awards function and he introduced me to Pete McGrath and I, I was absolutely uh, awestruck meeting Pete McGrath because this was in the in the mid 90s and Down were after winning like, two all Irelands in the previous years and he was just an absolute gentleman a really lovely man and then you've Mickey Moore I've never met Mickey Moore personally but like it's 27 years since Derry won the All Ireland, when Mickey Moore was was involved with Emma Coleman and that team. I think he's managed five county teams, and as you said, both, lad, both lads are around the 70 mark and able to move with the times. And another interesting thing as well, but when we think about them being 70, we think they're really old. I think I'm right in saying that Pete McGrath is actually younger than Mickey Hart, so it's 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 incredible. It's actually true. That can both told me that, so it has to be true. Yeah, and, and Mickey Moore was even involved with the Derry footballers, I think, when he was a player, even in his late 20s. Jason, we have you back there again. But Mickey Moore up against Pete McGrath this weekend when Ross Trevor played Kilku. Moore and over Kilku took him to All Ireland last year. And uh, Pete, Pete McGrath, he's still going with Ross Trevor with Quail and Mooney on board. So a clash of two legends. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Shane. Uh, sorry for dropping out there. I know Paul was talking about great Donegal forwards, but uh, Donegal doesn't look great on tonight, I'm afraid. Um, Mickey Moore will probably tell you that himself, but 
Yeah, two two absolute legends. Um, just evergreen, you know. Um, like Pete McGrath was, was just such a legend and down. I remember him taking the to Sam McGuire. Even they even took Sam McGuire into Tyrone one year when they won it. Like my mum's from Tyrone. I remember. Um, I remember them all getting a glimpse at it, and it was it was 2003 before they actually got their hands on it. But um, he's he's some man. I, like I'll never forget what he what he done with Fermanagh in 2015 as well, getting to the All Ireland quarter final against Dublin. It was just you know they they were the story of that championship really for for so many reasons. Uh, Mickey Moore, and then he's he's well so well respected here in Donegal as well. And um, he was over the team in 2002 and. Uh, you know, he, he had some great players, but he he probably wasn't able to manage some of them. They were they were a wee bit too hard on the party in at the time. But um, you know, he he brought he, he brought Donegal kind of towards back towards the top, top table that time, and you know, worked wonders everywhere he's been. Mayo as well, Leitrim, um, you know, all the other county teams that he's managed. And I remember talking to Aidan Brannigan last year after Kilku finally did get their Ulster title, and they said. You know, after all the defeats they'd had in Ulster, that they needed somebody to come in and just get them over the line. And, and the only name on the list was Mickey Moore. And they went and they got him and, and they got their Ulster title. So, uh, you know, he's he's a fantastic man and a, a fantastic coach. And great to see him still going. He could, he could definitely still cut it at inter-county level too. Absolutely no problem. Um, whether he'll go back to that, I'm not so sure. Um, he's not as fond as the... He's, he's never been too fond of the media spotlight. He rarely does interviews anymore. Um, I think he feels he's been a bit unfairly treated down the years by, by different publications. Um, he's never really opened up about that either, but we, we don't get to speak to him much anymore, which is which is a shame. But, you know, he's only concerned about what he does in the touchline and he's still working the magic there for sure. Paul, as we get to towards the latter end of county championships up and down the country, I, I look at Kilku and I think, you know, they've won, was it seven and eight down titles? They're coming back again this year after getting to an All-Ireland final last year. They're probably like emboldened by that to think that they could go one further but they would have a lot of players that have been on the road for a long long time so the fact that they're missing out on a tilt at an All-Ireland Championship this year assuming to get through down and so on you know that's tough for teams like them you know and it's probably tough for other teams too who've been on the road for a long time yeah it is it's, it's a tough one for motivation although I, I, I do think that a, a lot of teams have come back this year and are just um, they're so glad to be playing football at all that it, it looked like it looked like there was going to be no football obviously for a long time and everyone I've interviewed or spoken to in recent weeks even doing previews for the Ladies Senior Championship final this week and both captains separately said we didn't think we'd play any football this year so we're just going out and we're just delighted to play it and I think we're actually seeing that in the in the tactics and the score lines, especially in Cavan we've seen it massive scores you know the 3 13 to 219 we've had last weekend massive scores I think there's, there's a sense that teams are just going out but maybe managers don't have them for as long there's not as much collective training going on there's not as much maybe to sound like Pat Spillander there's not as much paralysis by analysis uh, tactics boards players are just they're just back we've, we've got a chance to play football we've got a reprieve I think they're just going out and going for it so from that point of view maybe it could refresh these older teams that have been on the road for a while I know Derry Gonley and Fumana are going for their sixth county title in a row and same thing you know it's a different thing if a man it's a straight knockout you only need to win two games to get into the county final uh, so that's different so it's probably not as hard to motivate there but yeah it is an interesting how is this gonna gonna affect teams teams that are kind of seasoned been on the road did it did it come back as fresh as ever or they just said you know what there's an asterisk beside this year and we just leave it mm. i think we're after dropping jason again there but look he might he might come up for the moment there's a still image of him on the screen staring straight out at the viewers so uh, <laughs> that's unnerving at best uh just a quick word on the tyrone championship now more so because rte have decided to broadcast the doubles the double header this weekend that's on on saturday did you see trillick against kelly Clogher last friday night i don't know if you saw the game but the fact that it went to penalties for club players been put to penalties on tv is that something that bothers you Are you happy enough with it would you like to see goal and score more extra time yeah i, I don't know what, about it being on tv being a factor in it like i think i know we well, the we exposure is a bit TV. more for a club player who wouldn't be used to it and like yeah, the yeah guy who i know misses. that uh, yeah and the shootout is particularly tricky because you're going to get a villain at the end of it or a fellow who, who let the team down whether, whether that's a, a miss or, or whatever it is but yeah I, I wouldn't be a big fan of shootouts I think you know I know this is an exceptional year so maybe this year games have to finish on the day and you have to find some way of finishing it as you said maybe a goal to score or is it not overly frightening about uh, maybe whatever team gets two points up or something like that maybe there needs to be a bit of innovation there because a shootout not, isn't necessarily um, 
the way they do it. But in, in any other year other than this year, I, I would say, look, give it as many replays as you can, especially in a, in a championship. How like only once ever, I think, or maybe twice ever, that th- there was a series where they went to a fourth game, which was obviously 1991, and, and it was so unusual that we we're, were talking about it ever since. So you're always going to get it wrapped up at worst in three, at worst. So I think give them, give them the replay if you can, because to lose it on a shootout is, is just a killer. But the Tyrone Championship is so close. You, you, I didn't see the Trillic game, but what always strikes me about Trillic is that they were a great team back in the, in the a couple of decades ago, but they actually came up and won the, the Intermediate Championship and the Senior Championship the following year. In Tyrone, which says it all about the standard in Tyrone. Like it's really tight. There's loads of teams there that can win that championship. I think they had at one stage just something like seven winners in seven years. Seven different clubs won it in seven years. Well, they've had nobody retain it since two thousand and four or five. I think, which, which was Dramore, there you which go, is quite yeah. incredible. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, Jason, you know, we, we lost you again there for a minute, but we we're just talking about the penalty shootout that was on last week when Trillick beat Killy Clotter. What What are your thoughts on the penalty shootouts? I don't know. Uh, um, we were talking to Aidan Omani about this morning and um, he's all for it. Um, it's a strange one, like, you know, at, at inter-county level it looks like they're just going to have to be an essential, like, the, because there's simply no room for replays, but yeah, like, for it's it's a tough one, like, um, you know, I don't know where I stand, to be honest, like, um, it's very, very tough. It, you know, you do have to look at it in the way that, you know, we're, we're so good to have it's so good that we actually have football now this year. Um it is a horrible way to lose. Maybe just for the year that's in it, we just grin and bear it and see how it goes. Like but if there is wiggle room for a replay uh, at club level, which there probably is in most counties, um maybe definitely give one replay anyway as as um as Paul said there because I, th- I think it's only right. But then last year too when the Donegal County finally went to a third replay, there was a lot of mourning and groaning done that there should have been penalties after the first replay or after the second replay. Um, you know, because New Connell had such a tight window before they went and played Castle Rahan and that game we were on about earlier. Um so like there's there's two sides to it. Like if if it's gonna seriously cause fixture disruption Maybe just put the ball down for the penalties, but if there's room for a replay, uh, probably one replay anyway is definitely the way to go first to make it more fair on, on clubs and give them a good yeah, crack I, at I'm it. I'm a big fan of the idea of this goal and score that once extra time is over, ref brings them into the middle again, throw the ball up, next score wins. But I, I don't know if that would happen. I think it would be the drama would be absolutely incredible, Paul. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, look, it's worth it's worth trying. But I actually like the the free kick shootout that was there for a while. I covered a game in the Ulster Club Intermediate. Uh, a couple of years ago, maybe winter of 2018, and obviously the rule changed after that because it was it went to a free kick shootout. I actually thought that was fairer on players because from the penalty spot you should be scoring, and so if you miss it, you've let your team down. Whereas if you take a free from 40 meters or wherever it is, it's not that easy to do it anyway. The most good players would do it, but you see them missed a lot more than you see penalties missed. So maybe that would be fair. It takes it off, maybe removes that sort of aspect of a blame game from it but look I think we're the penalty shootouts in now we're, we're stuck with it I think yeah so just to inter on this weekend Trillick against Coal Island Coal Island they held off Derry Locken who came back with a bit of a fight back to, to get through uh, Dun Gannon are against Ergil Kieran. so uh, Johnny McBride was unhappy with Ergil's performance against Dromore they're looking for a first county title since 2012 and Ben McDonald was saying of Ergil Kieran in the Irish News even the performance against Trillick in last year's final they were totally deserved winners. The scoreline, 12 points to 2-4, didn't even show that much as because we got a goal in the last kick of the game. We just didn't show up at all, so we have to kick on this year. And uh, for Dungannon, they edged out our bow. Uh, Paul Donahue was on fire there. The the Mayo Championship is back on this weekend, Jason. Westport against Brafey and Knockmore against Ballina. Now, last week, I think we all saw Knockmore beat... Um, beast oh what's that Ballon Tubber live, on, live on TV whereas Westport they saw off Balladrine. now Westport have already beaten or have already yeah they've already beaten Brafey in the group stages here so like we said earlier probably a little bit of a dangerous one um, Westport or Brafey definitely benefited from that red card to Keane Hanley last Saturday live on TV and it did turn the game in a big big way Jason yeah it was it it was a smashing game of football, Shane. Like I, I thought the first half was just fantastic. It was gripping viewing. Um, pity again to see Castle Bar empty like that. You, you just know the way Mayo people love their football. They would have been droves of them and watching that one. But uh, thankfully, it was live on TV. 
Uh, Andy Moore, just fantastic again. Uh, what do we say about him? He could definitely still cut it at inter-county level. Got a great goal to start off, kicked some lovely points. Um, he's just evergreen as well. He's just a class act. Aidan O'Shea, brilliant again. But Conor O'Shea was the standout man for me. Uh, even though he's he maybe hasn't got the, the height or physique of his older brothers, uh, the pace and skill he has is just fantastic. He caused Valadrine so many problems. He's been on the Mayo panel now for about five or six years and hasn't really nailed down a starting place. Uh, that's probably been difficult for him, but uh, I thought he was absolutely top drawer uh, in that game last Saturday night. The scoreline did flatter Brafe a wee bit. Uh, you know, they, they pulled away towards the end. The red card was a massive, massive turning point in the game. Uh, but, you know, they were full value for their win too. And they'll be gunning for that county title now that they've been waiting for for the last few years. Robbie Henley as well in goals, the kickouts and the free taking, just spot on. Um, he's just he's just a master at that craft now at this stage. Um, you know, the, the Mayo Championship has been fantastic for me. I've been following it closely. Uh, Ballon are the only, one to, only ones who were in the semis last year to be back there this year. Uh, Westport, as you said, have already beaten Brafey. It was the only game Brafey have lost this year. They've, they've been playing do or day football ever since then. Um, you know, Westport were all Ireland Intermediate Champions a couple of years ago. Lee Keegan against Aidan O'Shea again. It's going to be some battle there on Saturday night. And then on Sunday as well, we have two teams that are, have already met each other. No love lost on, on, in that one on Sunday between Knockmore and Ballon. I'm actually going to cover that one. I can't wait. Um, we were on a couple of weeks ago, Shane, talk, talking about Park O'Hara's interview for for Bad uh, after they after they got through uh, or the week before they were playing not more sorry in the in the group stages and um, Kevin McLaughlin they're going to have their hands full trying to keep keep wraps on him and uh, they'll hope they can emulate that one point when they got over their or their near rivals in, in the group stage and um, there's no love lost between those clubs at all they're in the same parish it'll be seriously uh, edgy and um, there'll be there'll be plenty of bite to it I can't wait.